The 1967 Malibu SS Pro Street by Ravel coming up next on Monster Hobbies. What's in the box? Hello everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of Monster Hobbies What's in the Box, where today we will be looking at the Ravel Malibu SS Pro Street. I remember when this kit came out, it was quite cool. And actually, if you look, the green kind of matches the green here, which is really cool. And if you love these unboxing videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. And pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you get to see it first right here at Monster Hobbies. So without further ado, let's go down to our GM showroom, rip open the lid on this modified Pro Stalker. Pro Streeter, Pro Model. And now we get back to the mean streets of 1989 as we check out this 1967 Malibu SS Pro Street by Ravel. And this thing looks, of course, like a major street competitor. Super powerful with the tubbed wheels and the gigantic 427 blown four barrel super motor. So uh, let's just turn the box up so you can see what I'm talking about and see that I'm not completely crazy. <laughs> but anyway, this model kit, of course, is one that I was working on years ago. So just zoom in here to the photographs. There we go. March that up a little bit. So you can see that major motor going on in here with the uh, high rising manifold and all the, the great bits and pieces really awesome stuff this course pro streeting was a big popular trend back in the day it removed the chrome paint over it with the wow now color put in the big tubbed out wheels and everything little skinnies up front for weight and all the uh, power exhaust pipes and all that kind of stuff real cool you can see the little differential back there big tubbed out tires of course turning the box up Ooh, everything crashing in there. The side of the box, of course, sorry it's so tall. Oh, I should zoom out. <laughs> the side of the box looks like the front. Stop falling. Front of the box. Okay, there's our Malibu. The top three quarters shot down. And then it's got all the details over here saying that what kind of model kit it is. Unassembled plastic model kit, paint cement not included, 25th scale length and the width and all that stuff and of course right here in 1989 by Ravel so let's just make the parts fall around in there zoom back out a little bit maybe to here how's that look for you guys all right I'm gonna take the lid off and we'll see all the parts now this thing is molded in a nice apple green now hopefully I'm not gonna lose a part because I flipped this thing around. Anyway, we got the old promotional Ravel material. Gets you all excited for the cars that were out there, like the 69 Camaro, this car, of course, 55 Ford, the Beretta Pro Street Chevrolet, and the Pontiac Banshee, which was a hot new car. I actually built one of these. It's upstairs somewhere. And then you get your free catalog from 1989. <laughs> Don't know if they got that in stock anymore. Anyway, <clears throat> there it is. And again, I wrote on the top, bought on August 3rd, 1992 at Zeller's Canadian store for, gosh, $9.95. Too bad it's not that way now. The uh, most recent model kit I've got, unfortunately, is like $47 for the same thing. That's Canadian, so guys don't need to be scared there in the States. Pro Street, mean-looking street machines loaded with performance reflected by the supercharged world of professional drag racing are setting the pace for 89. That's exciting. This sleek Chevelle is highly modified, yet it retains the classic looks of the potent Chevelle Malibu SS. To transform a 60s muscle car into a contemporary Pro Street machine, the rear suspension and chassis were replaced with the latest Alston Race Car Engineering ProLink chassis subframe and panels. The tubbed interior provides clearance for the super-wide Firestone tires fitted on machined alloy billet wheels. The rear suspension feeds the power of 
at the Chevy Rat motor to the ground through a narrowed Ford rear end modified by Alston and a four link rear suspension complete with adjustable wheelie bars. Right on! The mach <laughs> this machine means performance. Under the contoured hood inspired by the 70 Chevelle SS454 rests a blueprinted 427 Chevy motor equipped with two four barrel carbs and a four speed munchy transmission. Beware of the power of this radical bowtie street machine! <laughs> All right, you wanted excitement in these videos. Okay, anyway, molded in contemporary street machine color, this kit sports an opening hood, detailed engine, pro street interior, four point roll bar, simulated billet wheels, and a trick rear suspension. Wow, okay, I'm hyped. So there's our instructions there anyway. Now, with that all in mind, look at this nice apple green color. I want to clear coat this because it's just so unique. There's, of course, all our wheelie bars and everything. The springs. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's your front glass. Ooh. Okay. I don't like how that was put in there. Um, now, like I said, I was working on this before. So I've got the interior and everything all hooked in. Then I painted the windshield frames with flat black. Very nice job on my behalf. This would not be painted if you were to buy the kit. That is up to your steady hands. Chrome partries. I do believe I clipped these to make them fit in the box. Not too sure. So it should be one big tree. And then exhaust pipes. And sprue with engine components and whatnot. This is still fresh enough to show you. You guys will get the idea. There's the motor I was working on. And then there's look at those tires, eh? <laughs> Real nice stuff. I got little bow ties on those uh, wheels. Get some pieces. Da -da -da, more great stuff. Should be coming up for the review. Some more chrome. Oh, yeah, and then I was painting the front grills and rear bumper. I got your hood and interior components, dashboard, separately molded door panels, although the interior is a tub. So sort of a compromise, 50-50. Look at the little narrowed up rear Ford axle. I gotta finish this stuff. Why don't I finish my model? Write in the comments below why I'm so lazy. Now, anyway. All right, with this out of the way, let's actually go and look at those instructions. And here, my children, are the instruction sheets. Let me begin the story. <laughs> anyway, I've already read that part, which was exciting. And then here we have our paint chart down below, as well as the regular cautionary bits and the read before you begin so that you know how to build a model. Okay, opening the storybook. Do, 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 do. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Enough of my craziness. Or maybe you want more. Write in the comments. Should I be crazy in all videos? Anyway. Okay, let's zoom in. There we go. Nice panel work. And we have our engine. And it's showing, of course, the right and left hand engine block with transmission molded in. Cylinder heads and valve covers. Then we have our starter motor and our fuel pump as well as the oil filter. Uh, okay, the panels are going this way across, so let's go this way across. So there's our intake manifold with the two four-barrel carburetors gluing on the top. Our exhaust manifolds, which would be painted white. Oh, it even says there. And then there they are, glued going onto the block. And then going on the block on the other side. Then our engine drops into the chassis pan, and there's our upper A-arms going on there. It even shows how it's supposed to sit in the body, or the chassis, pardon me. And then we've got our interior bucket here with a fire extinguisher, the door panels, the two um, front seats, which are racing buckets. And then we've got our racing gear shift lever going in here on the floor. We have a multi-piece dashboard happening here with a top and a dash panel, which is nice because you can paint the instrument panels in here, which on these dashboards is kind of difficult because they are sunken in. You get your chrome gauges, 
your steering column and the custom steering wheel. Then in panel 9 here, there's more of the interior going together. The dashboard drops in and then you've got that nice roll cage in here with all the roll bars. And then panel 10 is showing our glass going in. You get the vent windows, the no drafts, as well as the rear windows and front window and a rear view mirror. Then we pop our interior into our body, pop the body and interior onto the chassis. Then we can drop our firewall component in there with our brake reservoir. And then we have our steering linkage going in, which is always nice when they put the steering linkages in these kits. It gives it that extra level of accuracy. Ooh, and then the trick part, you got to put your fan belts and all this stuff front of the engine in while the whole thing is mounted in the body. That, that would be the tricky part of this kit to say the least. Then you got your distributor and your ignition coil. Whoops. Ah, there we go. Going in there. Your radiator wall, or your radiator and uh, your upper radiator hoses as well as the Venturi's going on to your carburetors. Then we've got our lower radiator hose. I'm slowing down there for a second. The front suspension clicks in as one piece. Then we get our wheels with these nice uh, custom wheels with the Chevy bow ties on there. Then they pop on. Alright, then we turn it over and you got your little rear axle here with the wishbones going into this cross member. And then you get the springs in here. And again the cross member there. And then these nice wheelie bars going in the back. So you can pop a wheelie on the street. <laughs> and then our tires, you can see this big side view of the tire with the footprint and everything. You could put air in here, make them pneumatic. But look at how deep that, uh, that one wheel bit is. These things give a lot of meat on the street. And then there's going together and then we drop it into our chassis here. And uh, there you got your drive shaft and the drive strap, drive shaft restraint. Uh, anyway, there's our exhaust going into the body. They're going into the under frame here. And then, whew, number 29, we got our hood going in, rear view mirror, the uh, little hood molding strip, the grill, and the front bumpers. Uh, I do believe these were chromed originally, but you can strip the chrome with Easy Off Oven Cleaner. And uh, always use caution with that because it is a caustic material, so rubber gloves, mask, all that kind of stuff. Um, then we've got our rear panel here with the red taillights and the clear backup lights, license plate frame, and the license plate. I forgot to show the decal sheet. It was folded in the instructions here. Anyway, we'll look at that later. So then we get the decal location, the SS going on the back. You get four different types of license plates pop in there. Then Max Rad on the side and a little SS scribble on the hood over here. So that's our instruction sheets. Now let's look at that apple green beauty. And here we have our little apple green goddess, as you can see. Now, the nice part about me semi-building this is that I could actually pull this apart in the review here and show you, because usually I just have the body with the hood open and the hood's mounted on the parts tree and all the rest. So this time I can actually show you the fit and finish of this thing as I'm reviewing the parts. So I will pull this thing apart and uh, kind of walk you through it. So anyway, as you can see, I mean, look at the hood fit. The hood fit on this thing is perfect. And I, I do believe, again, this is in the time when Ravel and Monogram and everybody were competing with Tamiya of Japan as well as each other in the domestic market. So again, the nice uh, roof, which was typical of 67. All the GMs had this kind of uh, semi-sunken in uh, rear window and all that. Okay, so I painted the black on there like I said before. Anyway, so let's take the hood off. Let's start there. You can see the nice inner fender apron detail in here. The battery is molded in place as is the windshield washer bottle which is kind of uh, customary to the monogram style model kits. Uh, 
then what else do we have here? There's our front grill. And again, the fit on this thing is, is just perfect. But you can see there's no, no gaps to fill in that. Nice and tight. And then the lower part of the bumper. Now there was an, also a stock version of this kit came out. I do believe it was painted metallic blue on the box. But again, look at how nice that uh, front bumper goes on there. Again, I've stripped these with Easy Off Oven Cleaner. They came out nice. Then uh, you got the rear panel can drop into there. And again, oops, the perfect fit on there. Doesn't really want to stay in place with the way I'm holding it, but perfect fit on that. So again, nice work by Ravel. As we turn it over, you can see the chassis mold. Uh, now they got in place here. Look at how big those tubs are in the back. I mean, that's massive. Massive tire destruction. There is a uh, little Ravel logo just right, oops, pardon me, right in here. <laughs> I'm tilting this like this so I can see it, but it should be this way so you can see it. Anyway, again, nice tight fit. Listen, listen. That That's the popping of how crisp this thing fits in there. Uh, the, the tight bits of it. So there's our frame. You can see it's got some relief here for the front wheels and everything that needs to go in. And again, nice crisp molding in there. Not much in the way of mold marks. Well, some in the corners. Again, you know which knife to use. Number 16 Hobby Blade. Okay, moving that off to the side. Get the interior out of here. Fits in nice. So here you can see We've got the uh, rear seat removed, which was typical of the Pro Streets because you wanted them light. You got some pounding speakers in the back here. Listen to your <laughs> your tape cassette. Let's see what would be in 1989, some wham or something. I don't know. <laughs> so there's the panels. So this is a semi tub with the interior panels as well. So I'll get into that in a little bit. You got molded carpet in there. You've got all your pedals up at the front your uh, parking brake, your, um, <laughs> oh, it's been a while since I've been in one of these. Okay, your parking brake, your clutch, your brake, and your gas pedal. And not too much under there from old marks. And we've got these two little holes here on our rear package shelf, which of course mount into the body. And speaking of the body, let's finish this thing up with that. So like I was saying before, you got your inner fender aprons and the AC Delco battery, typical of the era. Uh, top post. My 72 was side post. Okay, and then we get the little crossed flags going on here with a nice detail. The Chevy door handles and the Super Sport logo on the back. Or emblem. It's an emblem. And a uh, little interesting bit here inside. And there's a bit of a sink in here but not in there which is kind of weird uh, there is some ribs in the roof but mold marks persist inside there so that's a bit of a pain it's still very nice nicely done and it's even got the little uh, bits here the lines in there for that metal cap that would go on should be pot metal back in that time Though my dad's 74 Buick, they were rubber. So, but again, they needed that impact bumper back then. But we're not talking about a 74 Buick. We are talking about a 67 Chevelle Malibu Pro Street. So I thought I'd tear right into the interior this time around. It's a bit of a change for everybody. And here we've got again our Pro Street tub, which I just sort of mentioned. And then we've got our front racing seats. Nice bucket detail. I like when they're one-piece seats, actually. Then we've got our door panels, which are molded separately, and I'll just show you some neat bits about that. Then our dashboard with the dashboard top molded separate, and then we've got our steering wheel. I forget what these ones were known as, like Mammoed or something. They were quite popular back in the day. I remember uh, going in Canadian Tire and you see these things hanging up on the wall every, everywhere. Pardon me. And then we've got our steering column right there. So one thing about these interior panels molded this way. Now this is kind of neat because you get a bit of a 
double view here. So first off, we've got the interior tub. And I don't know if you can see this, but look at the door handle. It's just sort of like a, a blump on there, right? Not, not really very good looking. Then, if you look at the separate door panels, oh, let's put that there. Look at the separate door panels and the the uh, inlet grill here and the the detail on there. You can see just how deep this is now in here with the separate mold mold procedure, right? I mean, that is perfect. And look at the window cranks. Here's a real. Oops, let's go back a bit because <laughs> it's so huge. Here's a real GM window crank. Now you can see in the little panel that that looks like a GM window crank, right? If you look at the tub, you can see, or maybe you can see, that it just looks like a little blobby line. So that's the whole difference between doing a separate door panel detail. I mean, look at the, okay, look at the difference. You can see it right there. See how deep that is compared to how shallow this is? How this just looks like a little line that's sort of just suggesting a door handle or a window winder or whatever, and that this is the window winder that looks like this. You know, that is your difference. And that's why I like the direction that AMT and everybody started to get into in this era with those separate side mounted door panels. Okay, so our green parts trees are going to be a little bit different because like I was showing in the box that I did clip out and start to build this thing. Anyway, there's our radiator, our upper A-arms, the belts and pulleys, the distributor, the oil filter, I think. Okay, uh, the front suspension components, the lower A-arms and everything. The firewall details, your drive shaft, your rear differential, the Ford differential. A Ford and a Chevy! Now, anyway. <laughs> There's our steering column, the starter motor, radiator hoses, and nothing else here. There would have been seats and everything molded or put on that parts tree. Anyway, let's just bring this up to the camera. These are separate. But you can see the nice detail in the radiator. It's got the proper grill in there. Oh, on this side it says uh, Ravel and all that. So, but that goes against the uh, front of the car, so you don't see it. The radiator support. Anyway, some pretty nice detail into it. Uh, let's take a look at the front suspension there. There you go. This kind of makes me think of the 53 Chevy from uh, Ravel. It's got the same kind of thing. You just plug it in as one big thing. So those are for your springs, or are supposed to be the springs, one of the two. And then we've got the little cap here that plugs into the wheel. These are always tricky because you got to make sure you got the wheel ready to go on there before you actually click it on because once you click it on you can't back it out. So yeah, and then the other part about that is if it's tight in the wheel, you can't make it turn. <laughs> so that's always kind of the pesty part with those. But anyway, there's the rear differential. Some nice detail on that front cover. Yeah. Mix up pretty nice for sure. So let's take a look at some of the other green components. All right, so we're actually looking at three green parts trees, which might have been one part tree at one point in time. I got my snippers in there, I'm trying to snip them down so they fit in the box. But anyway, you can see we've got our items for the roll cage and uh, other different brackets. There's instrument clusters going in for your um, dashboard, the rear exhaust kicking out here in the kind of like a rat tail sort of thing then we've got fan belt or the fan pardon me the fire extinguisher and a bunch of the braces and pieces and then here we've got our exhaust manifolds and the wheelie bar components as well as the springs so again let's bring this up into the camera you can see the nice detail on our apple green this is of course the aluminum fan with the little blades that you screwed on, bolted on, were bolted on, I guess. I don't know. You know what I mean. Uh, there's uh, the gauges there. You can see some nice detail in them. You paint them up with your very fine, like number five or smaller paintbrush. Uh, let's take a look at these. There's those nice long wheelie bars with a little teeny wheel in the back. 
and the coil spring mounted uh, shock absorber combination in there as well as our exhaust manifolds which would be painted white should be painted white for authenticity and finally those would hook up onto those rear exhausts with the big trumpets sticking out the back you could uh, flatten those out and drill them out if you wanted very nice it's got the little clamps on there as well so again excellent work by Ravel now we're going to look at what's left of my chrome which of course was getting stripped off um, the bumpers and everything would have been on here but they got stripped of the chrome with the easy off oven cleaner to make it better match the box this piece of hood trim will of course need to be cleaned off and painted black to match what's going on on the box art I have these all upside down I just realized <laughs> so but anyway there's your alternator now let's turn it over what's going on here oh, that's the brake master cylinder the uh, reservoir there's our rear view mirror the alternator again and these chrome um, license plates which get a decal later on the show and then we've got our four barrel carburetors and those venturis and some of the braces and our gear shift lever and just paint the bottom here black there let's turn them over look at the mesh on top of those venturis that's pretty nice real cool love it <laughs> anyway there you go and looking at where is it the alternators got the correct type of back for the GM AC Delco alternator so again some really cool bits all right I'm really doing this video in a different type of order for everything here is our engine block and uh, as you can see I've been working on it so there's the transmission all painted in the aluminum as well as the uh, oil pan here now this would have been molded in as one piece with the two pieces you know left and right hand side you can see a bit of a seam line up the center of this at least I can there we go hint hint o seam line <laughs> painted in a blue almost a Ford color should have been Chevy orange I think there's our nice uh, valve covers there with of course more so molded in that one's upside down there you go more so more so more or less anyway there's our intake manifold with those high-rise uh, intakes for our carburetors and then you can see our front engine here with of course the water pump and uh, the harmonic balancer right at the front so anyway that is what your engine block will look like once you uh, start building it get into as far as I've got there and here we have the glass now this is always cool because you got your sun visors molded onto the top of the front windshield there's your rear window your side vent windows or no drafts as they used to be called or referred to as and then we've got our headlights here as well as the four red rear tail lights I, I like the glass because it always looks nice. You can paint silver in behind here so that those pop up um, through the reflective plate. And providing grip on the streets, we have these massive Firestone rear tires with the sunken in wheels here. And then up front, we've got Michelin TRXs on the front wheels. Now, I've got the uh, chrome wheels put in here and if you flip them over you can also see the green backing plates for your wheels the wheel backs everything fits in here nice and tight i even uh, sanded down the treads on these uh, my dad made a special tool for me he yeah, actually there's three of them they're wheel spinners uh, small medium and large so the small one of course i was able to use with a block of sandpaper to uh, in the drill press to get the tread down and then we've got the big meats here you can see the nice raised firestone lettering on there as well as the firestone symbol logo i don't know where all the silver paint is picking up on my tires but anyway it's in there look at the nice tread pattern on that you can see that one side's got them going in this way and on the other side it's got them coming out that way so pretty cool we could use these either way 
Now, there's the wheel backs for them. They've got a bit of a deeper throw in them. The fit and finish on them is very nice. So it should be easy to put them together, make a beautiful model out of it. But again, very deep wheel. Let's see if I can punch this out. Nope, never mind. <laughs> Just trust me, it's in there deeply. So there's our tires. And last but not least in this great review is the decal sheet. So here we've got some very generic Chevelle license plates. Then we have a BRW 992 from Pennsylvania! <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but uh, this is the, probably the best license plate on here for accuracy because this is just a generic Pennsylvania plate. Now, um, we've got these interesting sort of scribble splash panels. Now, I couldn't figure out where they went originally, but then I was looking at the instruction sheet, of course, which is always a good place to look, right? <laughs> these go in the interior. These are on the door panels, and this is in the center at the back. Then we have Max Rat and SS, which is sort of in the scribble, scratchy lettering. Then we have the California Big Block sitting here. And then the generic Heartbeat Chevrolet type license plates on the end. So very nice, um, nice detail work on our decals. And that basically is it. And that completes our look at the 1967 Malibu SS Pro Street by Ravel. And if you've built this model, let us know how you enjoyed it in the comment section down below. Well, I hope you enjoyed that great review of our Ravel and 1967 Chevy Malibu SS Pro Street. And I do hope you can find one of these in your collection, because this one is in my collection to be one day built. Maybe I'll uh, make some Monster Hobbies graphics for this nice green machine. <laughs> And anyway, if you do love our channel and like these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with all your friends and family. Tune in next week when we will be opening up yet another model kit. And don't forget to pound that notification bell so every time I make a new video, you are the first ones to see it. Let's get this thing up to 100 likes, and until next time, see you on the streets.